Hi folks, I'm Sean McCormick. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the histogram inside Lightroom Classic 10. Hey folks, so we're going to look at the start of develop today. And the reason we're doing that is because editing is a lot more fun than file management. So library is kind of like the office work, whereas, you know, develop is going home and doing a bit of painting after. So let's jump in and look at what's going on with the histogram. Hi folks, if you like the channel, please do think about subscribing to the channel. There's a great percentage of you are not subscribed and I'm really trying to hit 7K and then hopefully 10K. So please do give the channel a subscribe. Thank you. So the histogram is located over here. And um, I'm just gonna mention very quickly that if you wanna have an expanded version, you can just pull this out. But if you hold down your Alt or Option key, you can actually drag it out much further. But generally speaking, I just have it at the kind of the wider view. Okay, so the, the histogram is here and it, it shows you the range of tones from the darkest to the brightest. So inside here, all of these peaks, they show you what's going on with that quantity of tone. So this means that there's a lot of a darker tone here, which looking at this is probably the top. And these lights are kind of warmer tones here. That is more than likely what's going on with the champagne skirt here. Uh, and some of the skin a little bit as well. So that's what is going on with that. So that's what the tones mean. Now, as we saw, if we hovered, we can see that we've got blacks, shadows, exposure, highlights, and whites. Those are the different areas of the image and the different kind of tonal ranges. They do overlap a bit. And when you move one of them, like if you move exposure, then it changes where your, your highlights and your shadows, for example, would be working. Now, in this case here, the blacks are the deepest part of the image and the whites are the brightest. Now, generally speaking, if you have overexposure, you're better off pulling down highlights than whites. But if you're setting your black and your white point, what you can do here is you can watch these clipping indicators uh, and they will just look at them. And if we pull this down here, we can see that that goes and that shows us that we have um, some clipping. And as we hover over it, it will show you the areas that are clipped. And if we click it on, it stays on all of the time, so we don't have to kind of hover. Same on the other side, we can turn this on, and if we pull up the whites, we can see the areas that are getting overexposed there, okay? Now, because of the fact that the skin isn't actually fully white, by dragging that up too much, we're actually gonna completely overexpose the image from doing that. So there is no true white in this image as such, so it's probably a good idea not to be bringing stuff towards that. It just Now, as we can see here, there is a clump down here, but this is a reasonably well exposed image. We have detail pretty much everywhere, uh, except for these tiny little bits here, and that's because I've got pulled down the blacks a fair bit. But it doesn't matter if you've got a small little bit of clipping in the blacks because you expect shadow to lose a little bit of detail. We can't see into shadows. Um, it does matter if you've got highlights clipping because it's the eyes drawn to the brightest thing in the image and you will automatically see that and just be like, oh, please, no. So as we can see, we can move around the different sections um, so shadows is not the darkest part of the image, but it will control it a little bit. If you watch, you can see here that as the histogram moves that the blacks are changing as well. The black area of the histogram is changing. Like I say, they're interactive. Uh, and the same with highlights. So we can see that's pushing up the whites at the same time. So I would generally fix exposure by pulling these together. All right. Um, another quick thing as well as below it, we see we've got this original smart preview. So this will say original if there is no smart preview. So let's just get rid of the smart preview to show you how that would look. So we click on the words here and we can discard the smart preview. We click OK, it's discarded. We can now see we have the original photo. So we click original photo. It will now tell us that we can build a smart preview. So smart previews are files that are 25, 60 pixels long uh, and you can use them for editing or if your images are on a separate drive, uh, an external drive and you disconnect the drive and your libraries on an internal drive then you can still edit the file using those smart previews smart previews are what lightroom sync uses to send stuff up online from classic to the cloud uh, whereas lightroom desktop as in the mobile version of the desktop app and um, that will upload full files now there's one other thing which we can't see here and that's because we're updated to the current process version but if we were on an old process version, say process version four, for example, we get this little warning icon here telling us that we're on an older process version. So process versions are how Lightroom uh, decides how your raw file is gonna look. So originally they had no name whatsoever, and it would have been like ACR 2.4 or 4.4, they had no real name to them. And then when they decided to do process version uh, 2010, 
I think it was, they did, um, uh, like, so the old one became Lightroom Process version 2003. So it was 2003, 2010, then 2012. And then decided with Process version 4, they were just going to call it Process version 4. So they renamed all of the older ones. Uh, and now we're currently on Process version 5. Process version 3 and Process version 4 are very, very different. So let me actually just jump back and show that to you very, very briefly here. Um, no, I tell a lie, it was process version 2 where the big change was, so let me just jump back to that. So you can see here that we had recovery and fill light, and then we jumped to the current one, we have shadows and highlights instead. So we can see that we got a, a little bit more control. The other thing is that they were basing it a little bit more off um, uh, oh yeah, Laplace equations and all of this kind of stuff. There was really interesting stuff about it, why they did that. But they were able to get more dynamic range out of it by using this setup, and that's why it changed. If you use Lightroom way back then and you made changes, like the changes it made didn't weren't always very accurate, so you, you kind of needed to have to work with it. But now all, all new images will come in with the current process version, so you don't need to worry about it too much unless you have older images. But I would say always try and be on the latest process version. Unless you've edited an image in a particular way that's got an old one and you like how it looks, don't change it because you want it to stay how it looks. That's basically all I want to say on that. Now, what is the right histogram? Well, let's have a look at a couple of other images here, for example. Generally speaking, you don't want too much stuff in the bottom, too much stuff in the top. But we can see here, this image is actually fairly light toned, but happens to have one dark bit. But looking at this, you would think that it's a very dark image. But in actual fact, it's not. It's actually a reasonably mid-toned plus image. Right, so let's have a look at another image that's kind of the opposite here. Oh, let's not be opening files. And we could grab this one here, for example. Right, so this one here is a nighttime image. And we can see here that there is a clump of stuff here, but there's also something that's overexposed. And we can see here that that's that big red thing in the sky, which is not really red, it's actually the moon, just that I have the clipping indicators on. Now you can turn the clipping indicators on and off together using the J key. All right, that will turn on on off cl both clipping indicators. All right, now this is a specular source, uh, it's a light source within the image. You expect light sources within the images to be blown out. Okay, generally speaking, they will be blown out. So don't go trying to rescue them or you will end up with having just the rest of the image will be completely dark, basically. All right, now, so that most of this tone, of, uh, most of the tone in this image is, is clearly uh, below mid tone here. And we can see that reflected in this but it's not underexposed. We can see here that we've actually got reasonably good exposure on everything in it, a slight overexposure in areas. Um, but this is a reasonably well exposed image. So we go for something that's going to be a little bit more kind of mid tony and that's this image here. And in fact, by looking at this one, we can actually see this one's got the old process version on it. And so uh, we can just, that's not what I'm trying to click here. We can update this. And if you've got more than one image selected, it lets you update those as well. So we can see here that there is no true black in this image and there is no true white in this image. So if we wanted, we could press this J key on and what we could do is we could drag our blacks down until we just start to see clipping, right, which is just there. So the blues are starting to clip and then we can actually draw, drag up the whites here until we start to see that. Now, the difference with exposure uh, compared to these is that, and compared to even in your camera, exposure tries to protect the highlights as much as possible. So you can see here it's like even pushing up against it to stop it clipping. And it's only after you've been doing a little bit of stuff that it's going to allow it to clip. And that's because we've pushed up the whites as well. Okay, so we can see that we do have a dark darkness in the image here. And then we do have a graduation across here. So we can see that we've got a reasonably good range of, of tones in the image. So there are some darker parts. And um, so these yellows would be kind of in a darker yellow. If we can see there's a little spike that's yellow here, that'll be indicating that color there. This lighter yellow is these yellows here and the kind of cream at the top here. I'm actually gonna pull those whites down because we've really lost color detail here in the edges. So just, this is not fully white. There's no true white in the image. So therefore you don't expect this to be fully white. So that, folks, is a general look at the histogram and even a little bit of editing using the histogram inside a Lightroom Classic. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already because there's going to be lots of this new stuff coming out constantly. Give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, hit the notification bell if you want to get notified of when the next video comes online. Please, please, folks, do pass it on. I'm trying to hit 7K. All right, thanks a million. Bye, thanks for watching.